So I'm Patricia Garcia Hill. Obviously, from the, from the name, you can tell that I'm from Spain. <laughs> <laughs> Although I'm based in Italy. Okay. At the moment, I'm not in Italy because I came to Spain be before the super crisis uh, because I had some concerts here in Spain that then they went cancelled as well. But <laughs> the thing is that then I was blocked here and I couldn't come back. So basically, I'm, my, my, I'm at my parents. <laughs> okay, so you got stuck so, in Spain. Yeah, I'm stuck in Spain. But the good thing is that I have my piano here, my yeah. grand piano here, so. <laughs> Yeah, 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 okay. And you can practice and you're, well, in a way you're with your parents, which I'm missing right now. <laughs> yeah, of course, of course, of course. Nobody's yeah. happy with the situation in, in some way. <laughs> no, 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 of course no. not. It's true. it's true. My parents are very happy, this is true. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Okay, and um, what do you play? Because you don't play the piano exactly, do you? I actually don't play the piano. I am. Um, Actually, play, sorry, let me repeat this, this, this is you can cut it. So I play the piano, I play the piano my whole life. But what I play usually in these um, last years of my career is the fortepiano. So right. the ancient piano and the historical piano. So I was, um, in, I am based in Italy basically because I studied it in Italy where there is a collection in Florida. There is a collection of more than... Espérate, espérate, espérate. Ha pasado algo súper raro con el sonido. Repite desde... I'm based in Italy. O sea, desde... I studied it in Italy. Okay. So, I studied the fortepiano in Italy, in Florence, where I live, because, uh, well, the fortepiano was invented, the piano was invented in Florence by Bartolomeo Cristofori. And there is a very big collection of originals, more than 30 originals that you can play, which is something very strange. I mean, it's not common that you can, you usually find these pianos in museums where you cannot right. touch them. But uh, there are many places in the world, actually, also in Holland, there are many places where you can play them. But in, in Florence, um, it's very significant, this collection, because they have very, very old uh, originals that you can still play in a concert. Okay. So, yeah. Okay, so that's why you went there to specialize. Exactly. Yeah. There, in the same collection, there is an academy where I did my master's, uh, my second master's. And um, then now I'm very lucky because I can go there. I don't have an original myself, but I can go there to practice when I'm there. So now I'm missing it. But uh, when I'm there, I can go and practice on the, for the pianos that they have. Can you explain a little bit the main difference between the piano and the forte piano? Okay, so um, the difference is um, not in the mechanism because basically the forte piano is just how they call it at the time, mm -hmm. or maybe actually is this is not even true because they it had many names at the beginning, many different names until they decided. <laughs> so this is something very actually modern. The the um, the name of for the piano that we have said. Uh, no, I mean the um, people who how to say, the scholars, have decided to name it for the piano so we can understand that is the old piano. So it's uh, the difference is basically that it was made handmade. So it's something that um, is not made in a, in a fabric like the mm -hmm. modern piano. So that's the main difference. Then there are other differences like the materials. For example, the forte piano is usually made only in wood and um, and the strings are made uh, of iron, iron, mm -hmm. <laughs> iron, and instead these ones are made of steel. Right. So that's another difference. Then also we can talk about the size of it. The right. very, very old for the piano is very small and it only has like five octaves. And then it starts growing in these two centuries of development of the for the piano until we go to the, we arrive to the 20th century. 
and then they start making it in the fabrics with the um, in industrial um, industrial period, yeah. no? Yeah. Yes. So um so yeah so that's the the main difference. But then also if we see a uh, fortepiano of the nineteenth century, it's very very similar to the to the modern piano actually. Right. It's still made in wood, but also this one is made in wood, but it already has some reinforcement in ion in the inside in the okay. soundboard uh, so it's it gets very very similar to the modern piano very quickly actually so the forte piano is like a historical instrument on its way to becoming modern piano exactly thank you so okay. much because that was much better than what i what i said oh no it's just in a nutshell <laughs> <laughs> right. <Very good. laughs> so I can imagine that with all the material differences, it sounds very different. The sound is very different, but the, the very, very interesting thing, and it is what it captured my attention and my love for it, and what I'm passionate about, is that each for the piano is different from another. Right. So this is what I like very much about it. That the sound of each one is completely different because also the, the the shape the size the pedals some of them have more than three pedals some of them have um these pedals that you play pushing up with your knees okay so um they are very very different one from another and the sound is as well so um what I like very much is that you have to be very, you cannot go and play anything as you thought it was going to be because you don't know what you're going to find. So you have to adapt to what right. you find. And then the interpretation gets very flexible and imaginative because you, you have to hear what it offers you and you have to give back, but not more than it can, and it can take. So exactly. So uh, it's very interesting because it's a very, um, I think it's a closer relationship with each instrument than with the modern piano, in my okay. opinion. Okay. Super nice. Very interesting. Mm -hmm. I can relate to that because I'm a string player. <laughs> yes, exactly. Exactly. I didn't know, but I, 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 I would have said there is something different. Sorry, something similar to to a string. Yeah. Play. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. play the violin. Yes. Yes. Cool. Very nice. Okay. And just to, um, to move on a little bit, what pieces are you going to be? Do you, did you decide the program that you're going to be playing in our festival and why did you choose these? Can you tell us a bit about that? Okay. Um, so um, the program, uh, I think is, is quite particular. So I like it for that reason. I usually try to find some you know, like uh, theme related programs, first of, first of all, and also something that is not common in the concert halls. So this one, this, this uh, particular program that I've chosen should be actually played on a forte piano or even on harpsichord because it's from the beginning of the uh, 18th century and but I'm sorry I won't be able to do that <laughs> yeah. so I use my piano which is very nice as well I have to say um, but um, the thing is that at the beginning of the 18th century the harpsichord and the forte piano that was the new instrument were living together and people were using what they had so this is what I will do I use what I have <laughs> yeah uh, so um, it is very interesting because um, you you can tell from the type of um, textures that you find, um, but well, the the whole point of this is to say that um, this is one thing about the program, and the other thing about the program is the beginning of the 18th century in Spain, um, which is the program about, because uh, all these four sonatas have a relationship with Spain. Okay, three of them. I have chosen four sonatas. Sorry, I'm very disorganized in my speech. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's nice. It's nice. I, it, I'm following and don't worry, editing is magical. So, I have chosen four sonatas, uh, as I said, from the beginning of the 18th century and related to Spain. Three of them 
are um, composed by Spanish composers of the 18th century. One of them, uh, we can say that is the father of the um, Spanish school, keyboard school, as I said, hardcore and for the piano both, mm -hmm. and who is uh, Antonio Soler, that worked hand to hand with Scar Scarlatti at the court in Spain. And then some students of him, Montero and Albeni, but not the Albeni that we are used to, <laughs> to hear. Not the, the famous Albeni one. From the, from the 18th century. Yeah. They share the surname, but they don't have any relationship oh. like familiar wise. <laughs> so it's <laughs> another composer, very interesting, very light, lively music and very sparkling music is, is very nice. And then the fourth composer, um, is a she is a composer female. Yes. Um, which is very interesting to me because we never play. I mean, let's be honest. We play very very little music made by female composers, and there were a lot of female composers. Yeah. And this one is. Um, she was um, Austrian. She was born in Wien, but she has. Spanish origins okay. by he, her father. Okay. And, uh, and she, she had a very interesting story because uh, she's so interesting only because she's a woman, but also because she was the first um, living composer that was able to do um, a freelance career. Okay, so she lived from so she could work for herself not for uh the nobles or the church that was very lucky because uh, she was uh, under the um, tutelage yeah of um porpora nicola porpora and um, and she received all his money <laughs> so she could she could manage to live uh, by herself and compose what she wanted to compose. And she used to organize big parties in Wien, where she invited a lot of uh, the, the most famous composers of the time. For example, Mozart used to go and he composed uh, some of his 400 uh, piano sonatas to play them with her. Her, okay. Yeah. So and also she was the one of the favorite students of Haydn. Okay. Nice. So, and she met everyone basically Beethoven and yeah, very, really everyone. She was very famous at the time. Then she was forgotten, but at the time she was very very famous. She was the favorite also of um, Queen. It's not Queen. It's uh, Emperatriz. How do you say Emperatriz? Emperor. Em Emperor. Emperor. <laughs> yeah. Emperors. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, just to say that she was very famous at the time, and that's a very good thing to know that a female composer was even recognized at that time, and she was also even able to live as a freelance musician. So, very cool. Yeah, we're forgotten in history, but there were really amazing women composers as well. Yes, exactly. Yes. Nice, great that you're rescuing one for for this. Yeah, <laughs> well, I'm not the only one doing that. No, but, I know. Um, but I, I really like her music, and so uh, it's great because, uh, yeah. Lovely, okay. She only has two sonatas for piano because she was also a very good singer. Okay. And she has a lot of leader for, uh, and also orchestral music, chamber music. And she what's has her a name? Very good... Sorry? What's her name? Uh, Marianne Von Martinez. Okay. Yeah. So the princess. <laughs> <laughs> no <laughs> <doubt>. Spanish ancestors. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, nice. Cool. Um, is there anything else you want to say about the program or about the festival? About oh, well, yes, yes, there is. Parents. I okay. want to thank you that you are organizing this because I think in these times we're living, it's such an important thing. To keep, uh, to keep us positive and active and engaged with the world. 
And so it gives the possibility to the audience to listen to the music, but it also gives a possibility to the musicians to keep doing things and, you know, like feeling the, um, the nerves for a concert mm -hmm. and keeping focused and, you know. Yeah. Yeah, that's a bit the idea to keep working yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and keep playing for, for people, which otherwise our lives are a little bit empty, I think. Exactly, yes. And exactly. also for, for people, hopefully they also miss it yes. and, and need it in their lives. So yeah, thank you for, thank you. Thank you for thanking us. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you for joining. It's really, it's really amazing to have people like you with such a passion, which I can see through the screen, through the, through the screen. and with such interesting proposals is really cool. So thank, thank you for applying you. and for joining us. And yeah, I can't wait to, to hear you. you. Yeah, it's gonna be I cool. Wait. Okay, well, thank you. And I'll see you soon. <laughs>